deal with the bigger threats on on the opposite side of the field. Yeah, I mean, this is why I love a kind of best of three format, because if your team has many modes, then there's the opportunity to maybe show them up and kind of be really flexible with it. But I think we should jump right into this caster showdown and find out who the local champion really is going to be out of Aaron and Sierra. Well, jumping straight out into the battle, Sierra is going to be leading out with the Amoongus and the Arcanines, potentially preparing for some Trick Room shenanigans on Aaron's side. And with that classic combination of Togekiss and Bronzong, Aaron has the potential to start follow me away any moves on Sierra's side, allowing Bronzong to set up Trick Room, if that is the strategy that Aaron wants to go for. Yeah, and you know that the, the Togekiss can threaten the Amoongus, but it can also carry something like safety goggles with that redirection, the follow me there, which would allow a kind of a seamless setup of Trick Room if that's the route that Aaron wants to go down. The Amoongus has to be careful of the, the Togekiss with those super effective air slashes or max air streams, but we are going to just jump in, Lou, and we're going to see a Dynamax in this first turn. It's going to be that Togekiss, you know, a Pokemon that when Dynamax was first introduced really was kind of a champion of this particular mechanic of the Pokemon video game. Um, able to deal out huge chunks of damage and particularly those max airstreams start boosting up the speed on Aaron's side of the field. Arcanine, however, just wants to reduce the damage output potentially from that Togekiss, going for that Snarl, reducing the special attack by one stage and doing a decent amount of chip damage to that Bronzong as well. Togekiss is indeed going to go for that max airstream, trying to remove the pesky Amoongus from the field, but it is rocking that Cobra Berry, meaning this first flying type attack move is going to be reaching damage also to boot the fact that it's at minus one special attack means that that Amoongus is going to be sitting pretty on the field at the moment and it is safe to potentially go for a spore as we turn into the latter parts of this turn here Bronzong however not going for trick room instead going to be going for another speed mechanic and going for that bulldoze going to be lowering the speed on Sierra's side of the field on Arcanine and the Amoongus by one stage so Aaron deciding to try and make sure the speed is extra speedy on his side and the spore comes out from the Amoongus it's going to go into that Bronzong so Bronzong taking a nap yeah, very disruptive turn here for Aaron because Sierra's done uh, all the right things to kind of slow down everything on Aaron's side of the field with that Snarl reducing the special attack damage on the Atoga case. So, you know, not going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the Amoongus, which is so important for her. And with the Cobra Berry on top of that, really just kind of making sure of that, allowing the Spore to come off and into the Bronzong really nice because that is Aaron's mod to setting up the potential Trick Room later on in this game. Mungus is now uh, at risk of getting knocked out. And the one thing about the Snarl drops is, even though that special attack is dropping, Togekiss known to have that ability, super luck, and can get critical hits now and again. So if it does land a critical hit, it will negate any special attack drops and be able to easily pick up a knockout. So Sierra has to be careful if she wants to preserve that for later on in this game. That is where Togekiss can be such a threat. And Amoongus identifying the threat level from those max airstreams just goes for a little protect on this turn. Togekiss is, however, going to target right down into that slot with the max airstream. And it does a huge chunk of damage through the protect. Obviously, it is super effective. There's also no more Cobra Berry and a critical hit to boot as well. That poor Amoongus still has to take a chunk of damage as Togekiss boosts up the speed on Aaron's side of the field. The Rotom that just switched in, able to catch a speed boost as well. However, you know, you get your speed boost, but then you also get a special attack drop as Rotom Tom switching onto the field would also have to take a snarl. Yeah, the snarl there is just so beneficial for Suri. And you know, she is just being able to slow this game down and really make it difficult for anything on Aaron's side to kind of build that momentum. We've mentioned the critical hits with the Toga Kiss, but you're not always guaranteed to land those. So if you don't land them, that's when you're getting punished for it. The Rotom as well coming in and that special attack drop. It's a great switch from Aaron. It puts a lot of pressure onto the Arcanine, but with the snarl support there, it's not going to be able to probably pick up a knockout onto the Arcanine, which you would normally go for with the Hydro Pump. This super effective attack there um but he's in a nice position where he can get rid of the amoongus and go for that hydro pump if he wants some damage onto that arcanine now as the airstream does pick up the knockout onto that amoongus yeah, Aaron here able to get another critical hit on this Togekiss, you know, really being able to kind of demonstrate why it is such a formidable Pokemon. But Aaron does have the luxury at the moment of really being able to kind of pivot around um, and make this turn exactly what he wants here. He picks up the KO against that Amoongus, no longer has to worry about Spore, and allows the Rotom that really doesn't feel too threatened by the Arcanine at this point to go for that nasty plot, putting it at, minor, um, at plus one special attack, meaning when it takes the Snarl that it just has from the Arcanine, it's now at neutral. So it's not going to have any of those kind of negative... Um, stats when it comes to its special attack and that's something that Sierra's side of the field has to watch out for like you said Hydro Pump there that's going to be able to deal a decent chunk of damage to the Arcanine on the opposing side and if she has brought any of those um, physical attackers like Tyranitar and the Excadrill you know Will-O-Wisp if it does hit as well that's going to be able to start weakening the offensive pressure from Sierra's side.
Yeah, the Will-O-Wisp is definitely a threat that Sierra needs to watch out for, especially now she's brought the Excadrill onto the field, you know, predominantly relying on that, that physical attack there. Uh, but the one thing that you've got to say for Aaron is, uh, if he wants to go down a Trick Room route later on in this game, he's, he's got rid of the... the the main threat to that mode in the Amoongus. He's got rid of that, so it kind of gives him that free freedom if he goes for that. The problem is, though, he's got that um, that Bronzong in the back asleep. He needs to get it onto the field. Maybe now's a good time to, to bring it in, integrate it onto the field, and get through those sleep turns so you're able to set that trick room up. Not going to be easy, though, because Sierra has preserved that Dynamax ability mm. you know she's going to be able to dynamax something on the field now and i wouldn't be surprised if we do see maybe the arcanine go out tyranitar come in and puts a lot of pressure onto the field gets that sand stream onto the field as well the sandstorm up and that sand rush ability for the excadrill to really take advantage of here well, it's going to be a switch apiece. Aaron brings the Bronzong onto the field and replaced with the Togekiss. And you called it perfectly there, Lee. One of your favorite Pokemon. I know you'll be delighted to see it on the field. Tyranitar is here, paired up next to Excadrill. And these two really are a classic combination. The Sand's going to be able to boost up that speed of the opposing Excadrill. And also the Sand will help boost up the special um, defense here as well of that Excadrill. Just meaning that it doesn't have to worry so much about any Hydro Pumps coming out from the Rotom into that slot. But as mentioned, the late game Dynamax can be key. And it's going to be here on the Excadrill. Excadrill potentially applying some really strong pressure with something like a Max Steel Spike into what was the Togekiss, but instead gonna go straight for that Max Rockfall, boosted up by the speed of the sand, straight down into the Rotom, not gonna be enough to pick up a KO, but does do a sizable chunk of damage, enough to actually proc the berry there on Rotom, gonna have to force it to use its item, its Citrus Berry, and regain some HP, but will it It does connect onto that Excadrill, this is gonna be really debilitating in the damage that Excadrill can deal out, but it has actually got a sneaky little Lumberry there, meaning that on this next turn it's going to be able to apply a lot more pressure with another one of those max rock falls what a clutch item there for sierra yeah one of those rare occasions for aaron with the will-o-wisp actually connecting <laughs> with the opposing pokemon but unfortunately for him the lumberry is obviously there on the excadrill a really great item choice for sierra is she's going to be able to pile on that pressure again because of the sand stream boosting the speed it's going to be able to get another rock fall off and it's going to be very close to being able to pick up maybe a knockout onto the rotom before it is able to act um, and the tyranitar in a great position now the bronzong asleep it's got a sleep turn that it's got to go through uh, and the tyranitar can just rock slide here if it wants to maybe get the additional damage that it needs onto the Rotom to pick the knockup out or go for a crunch or something like that into the Bronzong and get some big damage onto that side of the field. So I think that's probably one of the better options here, but we are going to see just a max guard from the Excadrill. Yeah, Sierra able to apply a lot of pressure here, but the Rotom actually going for the will of hit into the Tyranitar. Sierra maybe predicting that it was going to go into that Excadrill and thought Tyranitar might be able to deal with the Rotom for the Excadrill partner there, but it's going to be the lash out coming from the Tyranitar into that Rotom and due to the burn, really not going to be dealing as much damage as Sierra was hoping. That sleep turn has been taken now by that Bronzong as well, so this is where things can get that little bit risky. You just don't know when the Pokemon's going to wake up. Yeah, and Aaron taking a really nice turn there to say, well, the extra drill might miss the knockout with the rock fall onto the Rotom. That leaves me the opportunity to go for that Will-O-Wisp again, predicting the max guard there and actually targeting down the Tyranitar, the one thing that really does threaten the Bronzong and giving that full protection from that side of the field. Well, Excadrill back in action here, going for that Max Rockfall into the Rotom, particularly with the additional damage that the Lash Out did in the previous turn. Going to be a really solid KO, and Sierra doesn't have to worry about any more of those Will-O-Wisps. Tyranitar is going to be able to connect the Rock Slide as well on Bronzong, and even though it's not dealing too much damage, if the Bronzong was to wake up, which it does, it has that flinch chance, but no, Bronzong is going to be able to go for Trick Room. So Aaron really demonstrating the flexibility of his team, went really, really, you know, super speedy at the beginning with those Max Airstreams and the Bulldoze, and now has got Trick Room on the field when Sierra has the speed advantage prior to Trick Room going off. So really interesting to see Aaron manipulating the speed tiers in this game so far. Yeah, and like we mentioned earlier, the one Pokemon that would be a huge problem for Aaron in this situation would be the Amoongus. But the Togekiss did the job earlier on, got rid of that. Now Rhyperia in a phenomenal position where you can utilize that Bulldoze that we saw earlier, potentially with a weakness policy and just Bulldoze Earthquake and both Pokemon on Sierra's side of the field. We know there's not a Focus Sash on the Excadrill, so they're going to be both threatened. And with the Arcanine in the back, she's in a really awkward position now. What do you do? Do you try and get the Arcanine in, get Intimidate support onto it? I don't know if it's really necessary 
necessary to do that because it's it's difficult if the weakness policy is activated here if that's what the item is on the the right period then it's going to be very difficult for sierra to kind of come back in this game and that's why it was kind of pivotal for her to keep that amungus for this stage of the game where you can bring it in and really disrupt the right period because otherwise now we are going to just see maybe a clean sweep um especially without the the, the focus sash on that extra drill well, Estriel just going to leave the field and the Arcanine is going to be able to come in and apply um, that Intimidate. So just going to be bringing um, the attack stat to minus one here. But, you know, having seen the Bronze on go for that Bulldoze earlier on in the game, it is a very strong synergy mode within teams to be able to kind of self-activate a weakness policy and connecting onto that Rhyperia here. Yes, it's speed drops, but it's Trick Room. It's actually going to love that. And we'll be able to get that weakness policy boost as well. So negating some of the damage that the Intimidate did and obviously still putting the attack stat at a more positive stat. It's going to be a really formidable Pokemon for Sierra to deal with here. But Sierra also has a weakness policy of her very own on that Tyranitar. So that's going to help negate some of the damage that the burn is doing to the attack stat. Bronze on revealing that it is the Levitate variety as well. So it can dodge out of the way of this Earthquake. But it does a huge chunk of damage. That's going to be a double KO there for Aaron. Yeah, huge turn here for Aaron, and, and you know, like he's got that perfect position. The Bronze Zone woke up at the perfect time to get the Trick Room up. It didn't get the flinch from the Rock Slide from Sierra's side of the field. And unfortunately, this combination, like you've already mentioned, having the ability to self-activate your own item, your own weakness policy, and have that Trick Room mode in effect, you know, it makes it very difficult to have any sort of comeback from these sort of positions. And uh, the right period are going to be able to make easy work of this extra drill. And Aaron looks like he's going to be able to lock up game one in this local champions match. Bronzong as well, going to be able to deal a huge chunk of damage, almost actually picking up the KO with that critical hit off Body Press. But Rhyperia is going to be able to take the victory in game one for Aaron here by going for a Nuller Earthquake here. And I mean, this is why I love sort of best of three situations because there was so much in that game one lead. There were lots of twists and turns. You know, Aaron came out with such a, a fast mode at the beginning and then suddenly Sierra set up that sand mode and everything looked to be... Um... Sweep up in the same kind of way that Aaron did in that first game, but obviously without the trick room or the right period. Yeah, well, let's not wait any longer, Lee. Let's jump into game two and see how our caster trainers are going to be able to adapt going into the rest of this set. I always think it's interesting to see if there's going to be changes in the leads. And it's going to be the Amoongus once again. I think this is a key Pokemon here for Sierra. But it's going to be paired up with that Excadrill. No changes from Aaron, though. It's going to be the Togekiss and the Bronzong. And this is, again, where the mind games start to come in. Is he going to go for speed again? Or could we see a potential Follow Me Trick Room? Yeah, that's the, the that's the problem. I think like the, the the trick room threat is so apparent here. You can't not protect with the uh, the Amoongus. You've got to try and go for that spore into the Bronzong again to kind of shut that mod down. Um, but you've got to be wary about the Togo Kiss because it does carry things like Heat Wave that could potentially threaten both sides of the field. And again, mm. Aaron going straight away with that Dynamax on his Togo Kiss. Yeah, straight away going to be the Togekiss, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another Max Airstream here going straight into that Amoongus, trying to break the Cobra Berry early. But no, it's going to be the Max Flare going straight down into that Excadrill. Just a huge chunk of damage, and I believe actually manages to pick up the KO there with a critical hit. Brings the Sun onto the field as well, so any of these Max Flares are going to be boosted even more into this next turn. Completely ignoring the Amoongus and removing the physical threat from the field. Bronzong as well, going onto the offensive and goes for that body press just in case it needed to do that additional bit of damage to the Excadrill. Amoongus, however, is going to be free to go for a Spore, and once again that Bronzong is going to be able to take a sleep. But what a offensive start here from Aaron. Yeah, he's able to remove one of the big threats from Sierra side of the field pretty easily with that surprise Max Flare there, which does get the critical hit, pick up the knockout, and as you say, get the sun up onto the field, so boosting it further the next turn. The nice thing that Sierra's been able to do is get, you know, the Spore off onto the Bronzong once again, going to be able to kind of stop that Trick Room going up for a little while anyway. Still needs to be mindful that the Amoongus uh, is going to be threatened heavily from an airstream, but at the mm -hmm. same time, bringing the Tyranitar onto the field that she's just done, getting rid of the sun, and with the Cobra Berry there, going to be able to put that Togekiss to sleep right now if she chooses to, and mm -hmm. obviously maxing the Tyranitar isn't a bad idea to start getting some damage onto that Bronzong while it's out of action and taking a nap. 
Yeah, 100%. And you know, that body press from the Bronze Zone was actually really critical there from Aaron. If potentially Sierra Herb wanted to switch things up, remove the Amoongus from threat, uh, bring in that Tyranitar and maybe try and, you know, boost up the speed of that Excadrill, the body press going into that Amoongus slot would have caught onto the Tyranitar. And we all know Tyranitar does not like taking fighting moves at all with its four times weakness. Going to be a shake up though here, and it's going to be the Amoongus leaving the field for Sierra, and the Arcanine is going to join the action. Going to throw an Intimidate across the field, but Aaron's Pokemon do not mind that too much at all. The Bronzong was also gone back into its Pokeball, very similar to game one, as Rotom is going to be able to join the field this time without having to take a Snarl. Sierra is going to be going for that Dynamax though, Lee, a little bit earlier than previous, and it's going to be that Tyranitar. This is going to be an interesting Pokemon choice to bring out for that Dynamax. I always like seeing it going for some really powerful Max Rockfalls potentially. Yeah, and it really does threaten that Togekiss, you know, especially the Togekiss has to be wary, knowing that the weakness policy is on that Tyranitar. You don't want to be here activating the weakness policy on the Tyranitar, but removing the sand is, is a really good first step. And I really love this switch from Sierra as well, you know, bringing the Arcanine onto the field mm. and preserving the Amoongus for later on in the game, essentially, uh, while also kind of being able to sap up that Max Flare really easily. Yeah, and the Max Dark is going to do a huge chunk of damage onto that opposing Rotom. It's going to be able to activate the Berry. Um, so Rotom will be able to regain a little bit of HP, but I think the thing you've got to be critical of um, and wary of here if you're Aaron is the fact that your special defense has been reduced by one stage as well. Any potential sort of special type moves coming out from Sierra's side are going to be dealing that additional bit of damage. But I like the way Aaron was able to overwrite the weather as well. Yeah, getting the, rid of the weather, obviously getting rid of that special defensive boost on the Tyranitar as well is really useful, especially if you want to go for Max Starfall this next turn uh, and then maybe try and get a critical hit. It's very risky though, as we've already mentioned, the weakness policy on there, so it could come back to kind of counteract what... Uh, Aaron's trying to do, but obviously as well, now with the Will-O-Wisp onto the field, is it going to outspeed the Tyranitar? Rotom probably likely to do that, so it does pressure without the redirection on Sierra's side of the field. The Will-O-Wisp does threaten that Tyranitar pretty heavily. I mean, the Pokemon I'm keeping my eye on, Lee, is that Arcanine. The sun is up. The opposing side are at minus special defense. If it is potentially a special attacker with something like a flamethrower here, that's going to be able to stack up and deal a huge chunk of damage to Aaron's side of the field. But instead, just going to be that Snarl. So unless there's going to be some critical hits here, it's going to be weakening the Togekiss. But it goes from that Max Airstream, does a huge chunk of damage because Togekiss goes, of course, Lou, I'm going to critical hit. Do not, you know, show me that kind of disrespect. And is able to pick up the KO against that Arcanine. And Sierra is going to be able to lose that Snarl using Pokemon. Rotom does manage to hit a Nuller Will-O-Wisp as well, able to connect onto that Tyranitar and it will have to now have its attack stat reduced thanks to that burn. It does go for the Max Rockfall though into the Rotom but it is not going to be enough to pick up the KO. It does however bring the sand for that additional chip damage. Yeah, the Will-O-Wisp there is critical onto the Tyranitar because it really just means that it's not able to get the knockouts like you see there, the Rotom able to hang on and gets an extra turn for Aaron as well and maybe gives him a, the ability to, to utilize something in the back, keep it for later, He's got an extra switch in now and Sierra's kind of pinned with just that Tyranitar and the Amoongus, so it's going to be very difficult. She kind of needs to get that weakness policy activated on the Tyranitar and then at that point, you kind of overwrite the, what the burn status is doing and your, your attack essentially goes back to neutral then so you can still hit pretty hard. Uh, I think the big thing now is trying to get rid of this Togekiss but you've got to be wary of the Rhyperia and the Bronzong potentially sitting in the back for Aaron. Yeah, exactly. It's making sure that you've got the utility to be able to pick up these KOs. And, you know, Moongut's not known for its sort of offensive pressure. And the burn on that Tyranitar is going to be able to work against Sierra here. But, of course, the sand damage will be enough to pick up the KO on that Rotom if it does decide to stay in on the field. And Aaron no longer has access to the Dynamax here. So, although critical hits could still very much be a thing, at least you're not going to have the additional kind of um, base power damage that you get from using max moves. No, and that's a that's a big plus. And I think, you know, the Bronzong switch here in is perfect because out of everything on the field, you think that's probably the, the, the target that you would you would go down if you are Sierra with a, a rock fall into that slot. Uh, so the Bronzong gonna be able to come in and kind of easily take this. Yeah, Rotom going for that Will-O-Wisp into the Protect of the Amoongus as Max Rockfall comes out. And the Bronzong going to be able to take that much better than the Togekiss would have. Togekiss, I mean, still relatively healthy there in the back. Aaron now has access to a free switch due to the Rotom being KO'd to the sand. Gives him the opportunity to maybe bring in the Togekiss. Um, again, it can apply some damage with, um, obviously, the Fire-type moves there, trying to remove the Amoongus from play, or could always go for the Flying-type moves as well um, and just try and remove the, the threat of that sport from the field. And I believe as well that is the end of the Dynamax 
turns for Sierra. So it's going to be interesting to see how these last couple of turns play out in this game. Yeah, it's just the offensive pressure that, that Sierra is missing at the minute from the, the Tyranitar with that burn. It's it's such a big thing for it to really get behind because obviously you want to be hitting for huge damage onto the super effective things in front of you. But now because of that burn, the, both the Togekiss and the, the Bronze are going to be able to just sit on the field and kind of sap things up and really deal with that Amoongus before something like the Rhyperia potentially comes onto the field to close the game out like it did in game one. And poor Amoongus taking a critical hit from that heat wave his way. It did a huge chunk of damage. And despite the lash out being super effective, Bronzong going to be able to take that relatively easily. It's going to just take another turn of sleep. And this is where things can get interesting for Sierra. Amoongus able to hang on does manage to go for the sport onto that Togekiss, which is now going to have to take a little bit of sleep. And I wonder if there is anything that this Tyranitar can do to try and chip away at that Togekiss while it's taking its sleep turns. Maybe try and remove it from the field. Yeah, and then. There, there is an option here of maybe trying to activate your own weakness policy on the Tyranitar. If you've got something like Giga Drain on the Amoongus, it's a safe turn to potentially go for that. It's risky, of course, and the Tyranitar won't be able to utilize that till the next turn. But, you know, doing that might be enough if you go for a lash out into the Bronzong here to hopefully have it stay asleep for at least one more turn. And then you can remove it, so preventing that Trick Room going up in the late game. I mean, despite the burn, the Rock Slide does still do a decent chunk to that opposing Togekiss. Um, the Bronzong, however, wakes up, goes for that Bulldoze. This is going to be able to activate that weakness policy on the Tyranitar on Sierra's side. So this could be what the Tyranitar has been waiting for ever since it got the burn. Of course, not going to be dealing too much damage to the Amoongus. But unless the Amoongus is going for something like a Sludge Bomb here, um, you know, to maybe try and double up, which it is doing into that Togekiss. I was going to say Togekiss will be able to hang around. But no, the double up, Amoongus able to be able to pick up the KO against it. Yeah, no, that's a big play there, getting rid of the Togekiss. It's unfortunate, again, that the Bronzons woke up when it has because it's been able to get not only the Trick Room, the, the Bulldoze, which is probably way more beneficial now for the right period to come in and just go for that clean Earthquake. The Tyranitar mm. obviously getting its weakness policy activated, but in this position against the Rhyperia that can just click that Earthquake button, it feels, again, very difficult for, for Sierra to kind of come back from this spot. Yeah, it certainly is tricky with the damage that the Tyranitar has already taken as well. Something like an Earthquake. It's going to be a little touch and go, particularly with the burn chip there as well. Um, and of course, Bulldoze, yes, it does activate the weakness policy, but it will reduce the speed as well. And that's something Tyranitar doesn't want, while Trick Room is not going to be active. Yeah, and you've got to worry about the body press as well from the Bronzong, because potentially mm. that can and will just be enough if the Earthquake misses the knockout without the weakness policy boost from the Rhyperia. But here we go. We are going to see if this Rhyperia is going to be able to close this one up right now with this big Earthquake. And Ooh, it, it is does. enough. Aaron taking this one and the Tyranitar and Amoongus is oh. both falling. Ah. <sighs> With a critical hit as well. So the Rhyperia ending in style. And both the Sierra's Pokemon will be joining their Pokeballs. And Aaron is able to take the local champion caster showdown. Huge congratulations to Aaron. What a match. Yeah, amazing showing there. And I think the unsung hero from that...